Hi everyone, uh, today me, Victoria Harutinian and Nare Vartanian are going to present our Capstone project, which is a 3D printing filament recycler. As you can see, he, here is the device. Uh, our supervisor is Arman Asadyan and our advisor is Sarki Zeytunyan. Uh, so uh, our content includes uh, introduction, project overview, methodology, results, conclusion, and then references. Uh, so the main problem uh, that our project uh, aims to address is the considerable amount of 3D printing, uh, considerable amount of waste, uh, filament waste that 3D printing produces, which makes uh, environmental issues, resource depletion, and higher expenses. And also we ourselves encounter this problem uh, in our university labs and other maker places. So that motivated us to create this project. Okay, so uh, these are the three main modules of our project, and this is the. Um, can you change the slide, please? So this is the extruder, which is the main and the, as you can see, the most complex uh, part, and uh, it is uh, responsible for the melting and extrusion process of the filament. So we add the pellets from here, the hopper, and it, the extrusion takes place from here, and then uh, we have the cooler module right here. And uh, whenever the filament is extruded, it is still <coughs> in a viscoelastic state, so it's like a gum. So we pass the filament through these holes manually, and it's, it is cooled down and solidified during this process. And then we have a sp spooler, which we made it manually. Uh, and yeah, we, di we, we didn't bring this part of it because we couldn't fasten it anywhere. Uh, but we have um, the spool itself. And it is for wrapping the filament after it is um, extruded and uh, passed through the cooling part. Uh, so yeah. let's talk about our methodology. Uh, our methodology includes two parts, research and implementation. Uh, we conducted research about uh, different plastic recyclings, uh, different types of plastic recycling. Uh, also working principles of industrial filament recyclers and uh, for component selection we did research based on uh, compatibility, safety features and cost and our implementation included creation of 3D model and manufacturing, uh, technical specs, connections and experimentation. So let's talk about 3D models and uh, manufacturing. First of all let's talk about this frame. Uh, the models were created with SOLIDWORKS software and now uh, you can see the parts from the picture and from here as well. So these upper and lower corners uh, provide support and they were 3D printed and uh, modeled using SOLIDWORKS software again. Uh, also we have here this uh, mounting plate and these ribs that support the mounting plate and uh, in the mounting plate the extruder and the motor was uh, were, uh, are connected. Uh, we have here used we used MDF uh, base. Uh, it was CNC machined, and these uh, mounting plate and ribs were CNC machined as well. Uh, we use uh, and also yes, we use plexiglasses that were laser cut it. And we have here hopper. It is removable. Uh, it is 3D printed, and this hopper base you can see from the picture as well. It was CNC machined as well. Uh, so now let's talk about the main parts of the cooler module. We have uh, mainly the crossflow fan here. We have this safety cover above it. And the main frame that uh, was designed in a way to provide good air, air circulation. And uh, here there are holes that provide place for the filament to pass through them. Uh, so now let's talk about technical specifications of the extruder. As uh, you can see, our main part is uh, this. Uh, it, is, it is not visible here because we insulated it with the fiberglass uh, material with the help of our friend Alex here. Uh, <laughs> and uh, insulation was needed because the barrel, you can see it here, and these are the heaters. Uh, they, are, they produce uh, high heat and we wanted to uh, insulate the material in order to avoid overheating the electronic components here available. So uh, we have uh, three heaters as I've already mentioned, the barrel, the screw inside the barrel. Uh, we have a nozzle uh, with uh, one uh, here, nozzle with 1.75 millimeter diameter. 
we use this uh, timing belt pulleys uh, with 3 to 1 ratio. We use the NEMA uh, 23 stepper motor. Here you can see the temperature controllers. Uh, we have here also the on off switch that uh, turns on and off our device. We have the potentiometer that controls the speed of our motor. We have these connectors to provide, uh, uh, to make our device portable and compact. And also we have here our uh, AC mail connector. Okay, so um, these are the main electrical, component, electrical components of our uh, device, uh, which are placed under the MDF base, you may see here. So uh, first we have three solid state relays here. And uh, these are controlled by the PID controllers, and they are they have two modes of uh, normally open and normally close, uh, which are used to turn on and off the heaters. Uh, then we use an Arduino Uno microcontroller in order to write a program and uh, drive our uh, stepper motor and the driver. And then we use this uh, digital stepper uh, driver, which allows us to uh, control the high current. Uh, NEMA stepper motor with using just a very low current uh, microcontroller. Micro and <coughs> here we have our uh, power supply, as you may see here too. Uh, with, it is a 24 volt DC power supply and it uh, supplies most of the power needed for our electrical uh, components. And then we have a 24 to 12 volt DC DC converter. Uh, which converts the 24 volt to 12 volt and supplies it to our uh, Arduino and also the crossflow fan here. Okay, so here we have a diagram, power diagram, which we, we did based on the power that each uh, component is being supplied. So first we have the 20, 220 volt AC power. Uh, which is supplied to the rocker switch here, and from there uh, it is supplied to the uh, 24 volt DC power supply, the three PID controllers, the band heaters, which are under the plexi uh, fiberglass, <laughs> and the three solid state relays. And then the 24 volt is uh, converted to 12 volt in the DC DC converter and supplied to the Arduino and crossflow fan. And also the NEMA 23 stepper motor is supplied 24 volt through the stepper driver. Uh, so uh, we focused mainly on the quality uh, control. That's why we conducted a filament quality control test. <coughs> and the objective was to obtain a, a filament with high quality and uh, filament um, can, uh, can be qualified by the presence of bubbles, texture and ductility. Uh, here you can see the results of our first experiment. Uh, you can just it. Yeah, we're going to talk about it now. I'm going to talk about uh, the experimentation process. So the setup was, um, as it is shown here, with these temperature values because based on research we found that it is recommended to set the temperature val values in an uh, sequentially increasing order. So we did the same. Uh, however, as you can see, uh, the, these are like the set temperatures and these are the actual temperature that thermocouple detects. And as you can see, uh, especially in the middle, the ter uh, temperature was uh, way too high from the set temperature. And we thought that this uh, might be because our barrel is a metallic and it is a good heat conductor. So uh, two other heaters uh, transfer the heat to the middle uh, heater, heating element, and that is why it is uh, going way too high from the set temperature. Uh, however, these values uh, caused, uh, as you can see from the samples, caused, uh, present, uh, caused bubbles in the filament and it, is, it has low ductility, it can easily be broken and uh, it is of bad quality. Question, the PIDs sure. just control the temperature? Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay so uh, in order to address the issue of the bad quality Shall and also, uh, yes, uh, uh, because the, the issue of the middle controller that was very high values, we decided uh, to do another approach. So we set the value of the middle um, heat controller to a value uh, lower than the room temperature. Uh, so that the relay uh, connected to it would be at a uh, normally open uh, mode at all times and the heater wouldn't heat <coughs> up. Uh, and 
the yeah, and as you can see from the samples that you have, uh, the product is uh, more ductile; it doesn't <coughs> break easily, and there are no uh, visible bubbles inside it. So yeah, we got very good results, but we kind of it was our own <laughs> approach; it wasn't how, what was recommended. And we got good quality and different motor speed, and especially at 18 RPM. However, one issue that we faced, which was because of the, that the piece heater, which is very close to the um, to the hopper, uh, it has a high temperature. So when we, <coughs> when the amount of pellets that we would add to the barrel were not uh, controlled, uh, sometimes they would uh, it would be half melted and it would stick to the hopper base here and here, and it would have difficulty moving forward. Uh, so in order to, yeah, <laughs> sorry, uh, to overcome this issue, uh, we decided to, yeah, this is for the third experiment. So we decided to lower the value of the heater, which is very close to our hopper. And uh, we set it on 170, and it actually solved the issue of the sticky filament. Uh, however, because um, it had uh, the temperatures <coughs> are not uh, high enough, we had to lower the speed to 10 RPM so it would have enough time to melt. And uh, however, as you can see from the samples you have, uh, the quality has not, is not as good as the previous one and there are uh, some bubbles in it and uh, it, is, it has a good ductility. However, it is, the surface is slightly more uh, textured and it has a lower quality. Yeah, and these two are the best results we got and the these worst. These are the <laughs> best results and these are the worst results. It is more obvious on a school. <laughs> So we can say, based on the amount of experiments we were able to conduct, that we received <coughs> the best quality when we had the heater <coughs> temperatures as the uh, follow and with a screw speed of uh, 18 RPM. So based on our results, uh, results we did performance evaluation. And uh, with these temperatures as w and this uh, screw speed of 18 RPM, as we got that these are the most optimal ones and uh, provide better results, so uh, we had that uh, the time needed for the heaters to set to these temp temperatures is approximately 18 minutes. And the time it takes uh, for the pellets, uh, and yes, I forgot to mention that we used these pellets from recycled ABS plastic. And the time it takes for these pellets to be melt, uh, melt and uh, extruded from the filament is approximately two minutes. Uh, and based on our calculations, we got that uh, one kilogram of filament can be obtained in uh, 5.3 hours, and 5.3 hours uh, consumes uh, 2.65 kilowatt power. And also we know that one kilowatt po of power is approximately 50 drums, so we calculated the uh, price for our filament, and uh, it is approximately, for one kilogram, we have 133 drums. Uh, so now le let's get to the conclusion. Um, Actually, there are uh, future works and improvements that can be done to make our device better. And the most important one is adding an automatic puller module, because uh, our results uh, ensured high quality. But as we did uh, this pulling and pulling manually, we didn't get the constant results uh, in the diameter. So adding a puller module can solve this problem, and uh, the device can provide high quality filament with constant 1.75 millimeter diameter. Also, a sensor can be incorporated uh, with a PID controller inside the puller module to get feedbacks about the diameter of the filament. Uh, and conducting more experiments with even different types of plastics. We did only with ABS, but it can be done as well with a PLA as well. <coughs> And adding an LCD display or predefined molds based on the optimal results acquired uh, from a sufficient amount of experiments can make our device more user friendly. Okay, so uh, this was a complex uh, project, and oh, so cool. yeah, and we faced many uh, challenges. Uh, so some of them were during the assembly process and some were during the experiment. So one issue that we faced during the assembly was that 
we constantly had to make changes to the uh, frame because we were either adding new elements on the surface or ma changing the layout. So it kind of, uh, it was a lot of work and we uh, it kind of postponed our work from time to time. And also we had issues, we experienced issues with one of our uh, heat controllers. We thought we damaged it, but fortunately it was just a uh, loose wire connection which was detected by our friend Aram. I don't know where he is. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we also faced some challenges during the experiment. The first one was improper air ventilation in the lab, which caused the smell of the filament to stay in the lab, and it wasn't um, pleasant for the people who were working there, so we couldn't do, uh, conduct more experiments as we wanted. Uh, and also we faced you know, some uh, issues with the space, because as you can see, it kind of requires a lot, lot of space uh, to work properly. And uh, unfortunately, because of lack of time, we were unable to make an automatic uh, cooler module. However, since uh, this was a multidisciplinary uh, project, it's, uh, it demanded knowledge of uh, mechatronics, uh, CAD, electrical, and mechanical engineering. So we had a lot of uh, learning to do. And so what we learned was we experiment, experimented a lot with designing and prototyping, especially using the SOLIDWORKS uh, tool. And we learned how to work with the equi equipment in the lab, for example, the 3D printers, the 3D scanner, and the CNC machine. And we also learned the working principles of the stepper motor and uh, Arduino coating, both during the, during the capstone and our me mechatronics course. And also we gained a lot of practical skills, such as assembling and doing the wirings. Okay, so now <laughs> no one wanted to see it uh, here live <laughs> because of the smell. Yeah, it was a popular demand that we do not demonstrate it here, so we <laughs> have a video. <laughs> You're you welcome. Get, you should get used to the smell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are used, we, others yeah. aren't. <laughs> no, we are as well. <laughs> this is where setting the. Oh, it's written there. <laughs> <laughs> this is the main process. was all thank you and also I have to <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry <laughs> thank uh, especially our supervisor for uh, providing constant help and our friends for as you saw one help with uh, identifying an issue <laughs> another with the fiberglass and also uh, carrying the device around for us <laughs> yeah and also our helped us with the, some issues we we're experiment experiencing with our code yeah thank you <laughs> Question: Have you done any printing? We were afraid to. We didn't get the. the <laughs> we couldn't get the constant diameter. That's why we were afraid to <laughs> experiment with our. Yeah, because we didn't have the puller module, which provides the constant uh, diameter. So we wouldn't get by manual spooling. We would get different diameters. So we were thinking that the. Extruder inside the printer wouldn't be able to catch catch the filament. yeah filament. Yes. Do you think uh, maybe this is a guess? Do you think that if you had a slight vacuum inside there, it might pull the air bubbles out? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh okay. Good. <laughs> For the <laughs> <laughs> sure, it might. Sure, it is. sure. It is. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, we saw a lot of three D printed projects today. Have you collaborated with colleagues to recycle their materials? <laughs> 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 we thought about that, but the timing wasn't right. Yeah, yeah. yeah after like the capstone, we will collect everything. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> yeah. Um, recycle. My second question is that uh, we all know that whenever 
um, you heat up and reshape a material, it starts to lose its mechanical properties mm -hmm. over time. So as a rough estimate, do you have any idea on how many times you can recycle the same material under the same conditions until it becomes virtually impossible to use? Uh, we don't have a number. However, we did research and we found out that ABS is like a, a material that very hardly loses its initial uh, mechanical uh, properties and we did when we were extruding yeah. some filament we were using it again to recycle so it was like three or four times being yeah. recycled and but, we're but still it is not recommended yeah. I think two times is the maximum <laughs> <laughs> because we were using already recycled ABS uh, pellets it's still pretty thick is not recommended <laughs> <laughs> With a no we can risk and fix something <laughs> last question yeah, uh, you mentioned about the future work which is related to this uh, like cooler, cooler. Yeah. except that uh, what other aspects do you feel like for example for my <coughs> point, having that cutting it all the time like because most of the time it's not that shape yeah? I mean you, you are already yeah. having it with that mm -hmm. pieces are you thinking to add up that kind of that could be a, also a future work yes uh, these these are already uh, ready uh, pellets but for that, we can like incorporate a shredder, and we have shredder, and we can easily shred every uh, this weight. Was shredded or it no, it, it wasn't shredded. No, we obtained uh, the uh, pellets in, in this form already. But we you also like it. what we did purchase from a friend. <laughs> from no, we got it from the recycling company. Oh, yeah. And but we also broke our equipment <laughs> oh, and okay. added to them. Yeah, but the shredder can be. Uh, incorporated in order to have. Uh, okay. yeah. So it seems like if you would combine three capstone projects into this, it can become a business. That's the plan. After the graduation ceremony, we will get together and start thinking about the business ideas. And our goal, in fact, <laughs> our goal, in fact, is to uh, help boost the scalable technology. Yes aspect to the EPIC labs anyway, so. And jokes aside, uh, our goal for next year is to make this kind of capstone project multidisciplinary, computer science students and data science students and business students together get Perfect. do a bigger project, yeah. bigger projects like this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.